Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And just a few hours ago, we were in a really beautiful shade of green, but there are some of these projects, XRP, Ethereum, ADA, Tezos, XLM, Monero, they have moved a little bit now into the red. Nothing, nothing bad. This is just a little bit of, of a, a breather and it's very healthy to have this type of slow down when you've got this parabolic run happening. Yeah, everybody needs to find their footing. And XRP is still up 100% over the past 30 days, along with Stellar Lumens and NEM. When you look at the projects in the top 50 by market cap. So those three are in the 100% club. And Bitcoin seems to still be in this very long French kiss with the $23,000 range. I think everything is good to go. I do believe there is a lot of momentum still left in this rise. So just let the breather occur. Coinbase, they have shared that they filed their confidential form S1. This is a form that is a draft registration statement for the SEC to receive and review. And it usually goes back and forth. They have a lot of requests and they'll have the companies do some tweaks. And then when you get to the end and they're happy with it, they will approve that request to go public. So the initial public offering is going to be huge for bringing awareness to the crypto space. Just think of all the people who really didn't take it serious and they see this company Coinbase is likely going to be valued somewhere around $28 billion. This is going to put some seriousness into the space. Very impactful. It's a very good thing. And the fact that they have shared this with everybody tells me that they are most likely in the final preparations. Now, Coinbase is going to have to take it to a whole new level of public scrutiny to make people happy. Yeah, they're going to have to move to please the future shareholders and not just a bunch of people on Twitter who are tweeting out angry tweets when they go dark during a bull run. I think it's going to be much more severe on them should they have that uh, continuation. Now, the World Economic Forum published this 38-page overview. Brad Garlinghouse is mentioned as one of the contributors. I was a little slow in getting it out. Uh, when I tweeted it out, I then had a chance to go back through my DMs on Twitter, which I'm very far behind on because I've been in the middle of a three-day work contract. So I, I'm sorry if I'm slow to respond. I have to get caught up. In this report or this overview, just nine digital assets were included. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Tezos, and then some that you might not have thought. Celo, Litecoin, Zcash, Filecoin, and Arweave. They also take a look at the second layer protocols like Compound and Uniswap and some of the group financial services, including PayPal now. Wow, it's just amazing that they are part of this space. I did find something very interesting. This is QuickZ. This is a new remittance service by the on-demand liquidity user Neom. If you are an on-demand liquidity user, you are an ODL partner. And Neom has been an ODL partner since it was Instarem. They have rebranded themselves to Neom. They're based in Singapore and they're going to be moving money into the Philippines. And they're doing it by partnering up with another Ripple partner, Cebuana. It is estimated that 200,000 Filipinos live and work in Singapore. And according to this article here, which turns out to be an apatorial, which that means they really want to get the word out on this, uh, it will indeed be running on Ripple's blockchain technology. So this is good. Do I think it's going to be also utilizing the digital asset XRP, why wouldn't it be? You've got an ODL partner already that's powering this. It's on the other side of, an, of a 
ripple partner and it's in a corridor that's very liquid i i'm just feel pretty sure and i pay attention to neem because sbi was one well i think one of the first to bring any investment to this company it was back in 2018 that they did that and then ripple brought an investment round in the way of a series C round in March 2019. And then the last two to bring an investment in another series C round was Visa and BRI Ventures. Remember BRI because I'm going to mention them again in a moment. This announcement that I'm moving to is something that took place on Tuesday. I didn't have a chance to talk about it, but I don't want to miss uh, mentioning it. And that is that there is a new bank in Japan that is going to be using SBI Remit. SBI Remit uses RippleNet technology and MoneyGram, both, depending on the corridor. And this new bank is Daiko Bank. They're in Niigata. It's a pretty large bank and they are specifically targeting the foreign workers from South Korea, China, Philippines, Nepal, Thailand, and Vietnam. Vietnam represents the largest number of foreigners living in this area. Most of them come for technical trainee skill sets that are required and they are brought over by companies for specific specific jobs and then also too you'll find a fair amount of them are also students so when we go to the front page of the Daiko bank you can see i just show you what what their site looks like here uh, you can see the sbi remit advertisement and when you click on that it takes you to the website that shows a low fee of just about $4.50 to move that money. And if we go to a partner's page, that is interesting because you can see here the Siam Commercial Bank, which runs on Ripple. You can also see the TP Bank, which is in Vietnam and it runs on Ripple. There's MoneyGram. Here is why I wanted you to not forget BRI. This is Bank BRI. So BRI Ventures is the venture arm of this bank that is in Indonesia. Uh, this is amazing coordination, I think, behind the funding of RippleNet technology. It illustrates the power of this play. Very interesting how interwoven it is. And then I want to often focus just a little bit on decentralization. And the reason being is because of the Flare networks. They are going to utilize XRP and the XRP ledger. And I think we all need to be experts on DeFi. That ecosystem is appearing in games, gambling, finance, art. The new industry report just came out on Thursday, and there's a wealth of information in this report. Like, for instance, the decentralized app transaction volumes surpassed 270 billion. That tells you how big it is already with just now the brand new growth in 95% accounted for by Ethereum's DeFi ecosystem. So we know that DeFi has a scalability problem. And you can see here, looking from a high level, Ethereum effectively hit a wall in regards to scalability. The arrival of the Ethereum 2.0 has become even more crucial, not only to ensure Ethereum's leadership position, but also survival. So. The Flare Networks is going to be an alternative platform. And the fact that it is quite scalable, it does those very low cost settlements and it is fast. I think it's going to have 
some great potential. Somebody sent me this. This is from Dr. Uh, Dr. Boom. He sent me, look at the, the minor fee for Ethereum now, just for withdrawing $3.02 on compound, you're going to pay a $60 fee. That fee is needed to pay the miners to actually transact. It's just, you can see why it's not going to be a platform of choice going forward. And then please listen to the founder of Unstoppable Domains. This is, I just happened to find this. He's got a brand, brand new podcast and he's introducing his podcast. He is going to make it his mission to level up everybody's knowledge in, in the decentralized space. And I, I think this is going to be a really good resource for everyone. Have a quick listen. I've just pulled out two portions of his uh, video that he uploaded on the 16th of December. The Unstoppable Podcast, where we teach you about the decentralized web. My name is Matthew Gould, and I'm the founder and CEO of Unstoppable Domains. I have an economics and technology background. I discovered crypto when I moved to SF while working for a YC startup. Uh, I almost immediately fell in love uh, with Bitcoin. I spent my weekends going to uh, Bitcoin meetups. I ran a node out of my apartment. I was getting together with others in the space to build small applications, um, just trying to imagine what the future could be with these new technologies. Okay, now I just want to play one more portion for you. And this is going to give you a really good idea of, about what he'll cover, but also a great insight to his passion in this space. That is straightforward. I really think crypto is going to take over the world, or at least the digital world. And if you think about it, the whole world is going digital. I like to say that I spend about 50% of my time on a screen somewhere in my life, uh, but only 1%, you know, people's assets are actually much less than that, is digital. And that's just something that's going to flip. Uh, crypto is a good topic for everyone uh, to learn more about because it, it is going to creep into your life over the next few decades, just like the internet and mobile phones change everyone's lives over the past couple decades. Crypto really is that big and it is going to be that important. Not enough people see that yet. And I'm hoping to shine a light on the whole crypto industry to help get more people on board. Uh, and the sooner the better. And, and one of the major things I'm going to cover here is uh, use cases beyond maybe what you're thinking right now. Uh, everyone knows the narratives for cryptocurrencies. You know, they're uh, highly volatile um, you know, assets, and, and they're you know, maybe they're trying to compete as money, but they're actually doing a lot more behind the scenes than that. Although that is a huge component. Um, on this show, I'm going to introduce you to people building this next generation of the internet using these decentralized technologies. And they're going to be built on top of uh, crypto protocols like Bitcoin or Ethereum and other blockchain projects that you may never heard of, you've never heard of or thought about uh, and may seem really wild, but this is the future. This is the frontier of the internet. Uh, the digital economy is our new economy. It's our generation's moon landing. It's where the largest companies in the world by market capitalization, build their businesses. It's where uh, people increasingly go to do everything. I don't think it's a stretch to say that in 50 years, our world will be completely transformed by technologies built on top of crypto protocols. I can really feel I'm going to enjoy his coverage of this space and I hope you do too. So you can find him on the uh, YouTube channel at the Unstoppable Domains. And then also he puts the link to the podcast, which is on Spotify or um, the Apple page. So you can click and get to his podcast there too. I think it's going to be good. All right, everybody, we're going to jump to the fluff. So this is the time of year. This is the time of year. Everybody is going to buy their Claude Bamboo Rake. This is called a Kazari Kumade. 
and they are believed to rake in the fortune for the new year. Uh, there has been this traditional craft for 400, 500 years. And each item that you see on here, this is the sea bream or Thai fish, which is auspicious. Uh, this is the Okame woman's smiling face. She is uh, associated with longevity. Uh, these are um, gold coins always on there, of course, to represent wealth. There's the rice. I mean, it's just down to everything. This is a um, uh, cherry, not a cherry blossom, a um, ume, 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 plum, plum blossom. And uh, this year is the year of the ox coming. So that's why you see the ox there. These are so fun. And the craft is usually in a family and passed down generation after generation. One of the funny things is, is to bring increasingly good luck. It's recommended to buy a larger one than you had the year prior. And so this guy, I think, he, if he doesn't look that old, if he keeps buying one every year that's larger, he's going to need to have some help a forklift to bring it home <laughs> that's a big one it's a really big one uh they're just so fun because they're all different and they're all uh hand made by these families and one of the big events happens in asakusa so if you come from um, the middle of november to just after the first of the year, you'll be able to see like 150 vendors, 150 vendors that have unique versions of this Kumade. So I just wanted to share that with you and look who joined. It's Momo. She decided to say hello to everybody. I am just going to leave you with one picture, which is, I thought, so cute. This is a Siberian flying squirrel that is found up in Hokkaido. So adorable. And they really don't fly, but they glide through the air. They have these amazing, amazing expandable, <laughs> I don't know what you call it, comes out like, uh, like they have wings, but it's not, it's part of their body. And they can literally jump off of a tree and land a hundred yards in front of them by catching that wind. And they they work the um, they they work it with their tail and also their arms. If you look at a a uh, slow motion camera, they're pretty amazing to watch in the air while they fly. All right, everybody. Yes, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.